Hey guys, welcome back to the Vibe Within podcast. I'm your host, Gab Cohen, and today I'm going to be talking about my process and my experience of quitting benzos um, for not the first time in my life that I've actually quit benzos. Um, So it's been... I've been wanting to record this episode for a while, but I wanted to wait until I fully felt like I had processed everything. My body was, you know, healed from quitting the benzos. And I wasn't on benzos for that long, to be honest, this time around. So I wanted to kind of like get into like both times I've been on benzos, which the first time that I was on benzodiazepines was when I was in college. So this was, you know, years ago. And I was taking Valium and Klonopin and for anxiety, for panic attacks. Um, and my body just started to get used to it. And I just started to take a lot of Valium, a lot of Klonopin. So yeah, we're going to get into it this episode. I wanted to briefly say before I get deeper into this episode, I am recording this in a different way today, and I'm hoping that the sound is better because I've noticed and realized that the last several episodes, there's been this weird thing that's been going on with my equipment, so I'm not sure if I have like water damage in one of my microphones or if it's the USB or whatever, so I am recording this in a different way, and I really, really hope that it sounds like better quality for you guys, so... Um, All right, let's get into this episode. So yeah, the first time that I was on benzodiazepines was when I was, you know, between the ages of 18 to 22. Yeah, 18 to 22. And that was, you know, my prime college years. And I went through a lot of trauma during my college years um, that I won't get into this episode, but a lot of toxic relationships, uh, some sexual assault on campus, and, you know, death. Um, There was a couple people who died during my college years, another toxic relationship. So, and I've talked about all these things on my podcast. So these things just kind of made me resort to benzos and, you know, I know there's worse things to be addicted to, but benzos are pretty up there. Um, Yeah, I mean, it's you don't want to be addicted to crack. You don't want to be addicted to heroin. You don't want to be addicted to meth, I know. But there are so many people in this world and in this country, in the United States in particular, who are on prescription drugs and they are addicted to them or physically chained to them even if they don't want to be, you know, like Adderall and benzos, um, antidepressants, anti-anxiety medications. There's a time and place for all of these things. And I've been on a variety of different meds throughout my life. But if you don't want to be chained to one of these medications, then you have to kind of like, you have to know that like it's going to be a process getting off of any kind of medication that your body is used to. And it can be really, really challenging physically, mentally. Um, you might feel things come up that you've never felt before, like waves of emotion, waves of fear, waves of panic, of, of terror. Um, the first time that I was on the benzos, when I was in in college, I was doing so many drugs. I was drinking alcohol. So, you know, it. I didn't realize, like, the benzos were, like, the least of my worries, to be honest. But this time around, you know, now I'm in my, my early 30s, um, I have had a lot of, you know, not the best things happen in my Saturn return <laughs> and my early 30s. Um, I had to move back home in March and April because I couldn't find an apartment in Miami because of everything that's going on with inflation and everything. So that really took a toll on my mental state. And then with my aunt passing away, like right after that, I'm talking like the next day after I moved back home, she she passed away um, very, very suddenly. Nobody was expecting it. I took it upon myself to 
make a psychiatrist appointment and get some Klonopin because I knew that I needed it. I was having a lot of anxiety from already living at home. Um, that transition, you know, kind of leaving my life that I had in Miami and feeling like my world was crumbling and then, you know, just dealing with death in your family is just not easy at all. And I knew that going up to New Jersey was going to really, really bring up some traumatic stuff for me. Being around family, being around, obviously, just people grieving is really hard. Um, so I gave myself some grace and I allowed myself to take low-dose Klonopin just to get through those anxious times. And at first, it was just me taking, you know, half of a of a 0.5 pill, which is the lowest dose you can do. So it was like 0.25 milligrams that I would be taking at once. And I would only do that like maybe a couple times a week, right? So that is like, that is fine. I, I was I was using it for anxiety and then just the anxiety started to pile up. And that's the thing with benzos is that you build a tolerance instantly. I mean, Jordan Peterson has talked about this in depth and so has his daughter, Michaela Peterson, um, about his benzo addiction and how crazy it was for him. And I, I don't know how much he was taking. Obviously, he was probably taking a lot, but from everything I've read, everything that I've heard about um, benzos is that it's as addicting as hard drugs. It's as addicting as cigarettes. And it's harder to get off of benzos because you are at risk for seizures. You are at risk for like really big mental <laughs> problems uh, and physical problems. Like there, there is a withdrawal from from benzos and that's what I wanted to kind of get into today is that even though I was taking 0.25 or 0.5 milligrams which is a very low dose it started to work its way up to okay I'm taking half I'm taking half of a pill you know four or five times a week okay and then that that kind of worked its way up to okay I'm taking half a pill seven days a week okay now I'm just taking one full pill so 0 0.5 milligrams is a pill, and I was taking that maybe a few times a week during this very stressful time of my life, during the funeral week, and um, rightfully so. You know, I, I don't think that everybody needs to grieve in sobriety. You don't, you know, if you're going through a very traumatic time in your life, then there is definitely a useful place for prescription medications to help us find some kind of mental like homeostasis in our in ourselves like just to keep our shit together because if we are hyperventilating and we're activating our nervous system 24 7 and we can't breathe and our heart is racing and that that's not a healthy place to live in as well so if if you're trying to just get through this like physical and emotional traumatic time, then leaning into a medication as a tool could be beneficial. But as long as you're on that medication, um, the, the tolerance does build up, especially with benzos. So I, um, I knew that I didn't want to be on benzos because I knew what comes with it. And I knew that there are you know, side effects that come with t tapering off of them. And nobody should should go cold turkey off of any medication. You should work with your doctor. You should taper off medications the proper way. And that's what I tried to do. So I um, told my psychiatrist that I was trying to, like, you know, lessen the amount. And he said, okay, cool. Um, and that's what I was doing. But I still felt like I needed it. In order to go to sleep so I was taking a tiny piece every single night to go to sleep and once it got to that point I was like oh shit like my body is physically chained to this drug so that I can go to sleep because my insomnia is just so bad you know um, and when I realized that I was abusing Klonopin to go to sleep, that's when I realized that I needed to start tapering myself down. 
this podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp. BetterHelp is online counseling that you can do from the comfort of your own home. You can do it from your phone. You can do video chat or you can do audio phone calls or if you don't want to do either of those things, you can actually just do messaging. BetterHelp is awesome. I've been using BetterHelp since the beginning of the pandemic, so it's been a couple years and I've been really enjoying it because I don't have to stress out about how I'm going to get to therapy, um, rushing around, traffic, and to be honest, I like doing therapy in my room, around my things, with my cat on my lap, with my journal, and I love my therapist. She is awesome, and she does EMDR with me, so you can actually find um, EMDR certified therapists on BetterHelp. And depending on what you're needing therapy for, you can find a therapist who is certified and has experience in that category. So if you need drug and alcohol counseling, addiction counseling, if you are needing support around your eating disorder, or if you are trying to get more help around trauma or PTSD or family issues, you can answer questions and it will match you with the best therapist and then you choose which therapist you want you can also change therapists as many times as you need there's no cost to that and it's a really awesome service and I think that you will enjoy it a lot because it's easy and it works so you can go to betterhelp.com slash vibe that's betterhelp h-e-l-p dot com slash vibe and get 10% off your first month of online counseling with BetterHelp. Um, Let me know how it goes. Feel free to DM me on Instagram. I love hearing that you guys are trying therapy and that it's helping you. So go ahead to betterhelp.com slash vibe, betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash vibe. So I tried to start tapering myself down and then it just got to the point where I was like, okay, if I'm just taking a tiny little piece of this Klonopin just to go to sleep, that that's all the tapering that I can do. You know, like there's, there's no more tapering down that I can do. I just have to stop taking this now. Um, so I stopped taking it and those first five days were absolutely, you know, really just excruciating now that I think back to it and what happened is like just all the anger, all the really like the rage, all of the depression came up. I was, I couldn't get out of bed. Um, I felt very fatigued. Um, and I didn't know if that was because of the benzos or if it was because of my thyroid issues or my autoimmune stuff. So it's really hard to decipher like which symptoms are which, especially when you have autoimmune conditions. Um, but I just something within me knew that I wasn't going to take another pill. So I kind of just like forgot about it and I just tried to get through and I didn't realize like, okay, wow, my body is like really going through some kind of withdrawal. I didn't think it was going to happen. I didn't, I just didn't think it was going to hit me like that, you know, from such a low dose. And that's why I wanted to make this episode because it's like, well, dude, if, if I was receiving these... Hi, welcome to your neighborhood pharmacy. Hi, I've got a prescription for diabetes test strips. How much is the copay? Well, it depends on your type of commercial insurance and factoring in your yearly spend, subtracting the deductibles, also depending on your monthly Ugh, allowance. Why can't there be a better option? Or you could try Contour Next test strips. A 35 counts only $19.99 over the counter and proven to be highly accurate. Go to contournext.com slash radio to see if over the counter strips are a more affordable option for you. Hmm, I think I'll try Contour Next. These symptoms and these side effects from, t- from going off of the lowest possible dose of Klonopin, then the withdrawal is going to be worse for anybody who's on it, you know, in, in a higher dose. And it's not just benzos either. I mean, there's really, really crazy side effects that you get from stopping Adderall, um, stopping antidepressants. So I can't stress it enough how important it is to 
do it with your doctor correctly. But um, I do want to tell you guys like one really crazy experience that happened during this withdrawal period was my anxiety just, you know, it, it skyrocketed. And that, you know, that makes sense because you're not on anti-anxiety medications that are suppressing that and literally shutting that down, shutting it off. Like the the ability to feel the anxiety is literally turned all the way down when you take a benzo. Um, it kind of just like shuts you down. So my anxiety was... <laughs> I mean, I've never felt this kind of anxiety before, this anxiety that I was going to die, anxiety that my mom was going to die, and then the night that I had the panic attack was um, me and my mom had a fight one day, and then that night um, I straight up just had like a panic attack in my room. It was late, late at night, it was like 2 in the morning, and I was convinced that my mom was dead. Like, she was in bed, asleep, you know, in her room, and I was convinced that she was dead. And I don't, there's no rhyme or reason why this happened. Um, I think, a lot, like, your anxiety will run wild when things like this happen. And um, my anxiety was just running with everything, saying, you know, oh, she's been sleeping for a while. She's dead. She 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 must have died. And then your mind goes to all the worst case scenarios. You, you start living in the future of this dreamed up reality of someone dying in your life or you dying or, you know, the worst case scenarios of someone getting sick and dying or someone getting in an accident and dying. I mean, that it's kind of like a cross between OCD and anxiety because a lot of people with OCD will have intrusive thoughts about tragedy happening and like just really like horrific things happening in their life and that is definitely um how it manifested for me and my anxiety coming off of this stuff so uh yeah and I I definitely I, my mom ended up waking up that night and I started like hysterically crying and hyperventilating in bed and I never cry like that like I really never cry like that where I'm like shaking and you know, rocking side to side and, and like just hyperventilating. And that to me was like, I was like, wow, like this is, this is crazy. You know, this is, um, this is not me. This is something that is happening because my body is, you know, freaking out and craving that, that substance that was numbing, you know, my entire nervous system. So, uh, it does get better. That was that was the climax of that withdrawal period and then things started to, you know, get get better and get easier. Um but I still felt this like this really just uncomfortable sensation like in my body, this anger, like the anger and the rage were really really detrimental for me because, you know, living I'm already living in a in a triggering environment, you know, with with my mom and her husband and um I'm already triggered all day every day and then this on top of it was just like extracting all of the anger, all of the resentment, all of the the rage, all of just like the nastiness coming out. So I really had to channel that energy into other things like I had to go for long walks, I had to breathe, I had to really focus on deep breathing, calming down my nervous system, taking herbs, drinking teas that would help, taking ashwagandha, taking um, nettle tincture, uh, no caffeine, <laughs> absolutely no caffeine. I mean, I my body doesn't tolerate caffeine anymore, but if I were if I were to be on caffeine, like in general, not not just during that withdrawal period, but just like in general, my body just cannot handle it. So if you're dealing with anxiety, then just just stop drinking caffeine altogether. And even decaf coffee has caffeine in it. Um, even like a decaf cup of coffee at Starbucks has, I've read like some of them have 50 milligrams of caffeine in them, in the decaf. <laughs> That's kind of a lot, even 
even if it's decaf, that's not everybody can handle 50 milligrams of caffeine. Um, so just be careful with that. And there are tons of teas that don't have caffeine that actually taste like coffee. I've been obsessed with the tea chino um, coffee bags and coffee grinds. It's it's not coffee, but it's an herbal tea blend that actually tastes a lot like coffee. And they are very healthy for you. They have dandelion in them. They have lots of different herbs. Um, they have a mushroom adaptogen blend. They have a whole line of so many different flavors, pumpkin spice, maple. Um, I will leave the discount code for that in the show notes, but it's just a uh, gab love flow. And that's what I've been enjoying is making these, you know, sugar-free, caffeine-free pumpkin spice lattes using their, their Ticino, um, tea bags. And that gives me this, like, you know, this nice feeling that I'm still getting my, my coffee, like my coffee addiction, my that taste, the ritual, without the crash, without the jitters, without the insulin spike, without the cortisol spike, because all of those things, glucose spikes, those are all going to affect your anxiety levels. So that is definitely something to keep in mind. So I don't want to make this episode too long. I, I kind of wanted it to be a short one, but now I'm feeling um, a lot better you know, that was back, that was back in, let's see, August that was, yeah, August, um, and then, you know, so it's been a couple months since I've been off of them, and I feel great, um, again, there's a time and there's a place for these things to act and serve as a tool to get through a very, very triggering or traumatic time, but these things aren't meant to be on forever, especially benzos, um, I know people can be on antidepressants for a very, very long time, but I don't think benzodiazepines are meant to be a long-term thing. Um, and now I totally get why they say that, <laughs> you know, it's really the longer you're on them, the more fucked up your withdrawal period is going to be and the more challenging and the more excruciating it's going to be. So if you're thinking about wanting to get off of a medication, really Just start working with your doctor and start doing what you need to do. Um, You need to have some kind of support system and and tools and channels that you can safely um, channel your energy and your emotions in. Like you need to have some kind of safe space. You need to have some kind of support system. You need to have some kind of connection because without those things, um, you know, if nothing else is going to be supporting you in your life, then why would quitting, you know, a medication, it's not going to be easy regardless. But if you have that support, if you have a therapist, if you have your rituals, you have gym membership, you have classes, workout classes, you have um, walking around the block, you have podcasts to listen to, you have some kind of communication, support groups, um, You know, like there's AA, there's NA meetings that are all free online, Zoom. There's Dharma recovery meetings that are all free online and Zoom. All those links are going to be in the show notes. Um, Finding your people that you feel comfortable with, just even if it's going to virtual meetings a few times a week, it really, really helps. And that's all I do. I don't go to in-person meetings anymore. I go to all virtual Zoom meetings. They're all free. Um, and it gives me that sense of like ritual. It gives me a sense of, okay, at this time I'm doing this, I'm connecting with people. I'm going to share, I'm going to share what what I'm going through. You also hear what other people are going through and other people's lives can be more fucked up than yours. And sometimes that gives you some peace in mind and being of service and helping people and talking to people. You just got to get out of that same groove, the same energy that you've been in if you are, you know, addicted to anything, really. If you're addicted to a behavior, if you're addicted to a substance, addicted to a person and codependency, like breaking up with somebody isn't easy. You know, it's, it can, it can bubble up a lot of trauma and emotions and anger and shame and guilt and abandonment wounds. And it really requires us to lean into our tools, lean into connection and community. So I hope this episode helped you guys. And um, 
feel free to DM me on Instagram, Gab Love Flow, and I hope that the sound was better in this episode as well. Um, so stay, stay safe out there, and we will connect soon. She used to be a part of the scout team. They nearly meet a leader one time. And they didn't have enough thread to sew the patches on. She said, You know how you heard about that family that burned down in that house? Well, that was her. It was just some hopes that you laid up to watch people cry. Yes, you whispered to me softly. With Eversense, the long-term sensor helps me spend less time dealing with my CGM. I only need two sensor changes a year. If you're on multiple doses of insulin, you might greatly benefit from the Eversense E3 CGM system, the only continuous glucose monitoring system that lasts for up to six months with one sensor. Still doing frequent sensor changes? Break free today with Eversense. For important safety information and to learn more about Eversense, please visit eversensediabetes.com safety. Music lovers, did you know you can prove your music knowledge against the world or your family and friends by playing Song Quiz on your Alexa device? If your music knowledge can't be beaten, then check out Song Quiz, the ultimate music trivia game packed with millions of songs. We play you a clip and you guess the song and artist. Just say Alexa, play Song Quiz to try it now. That's Alexa, play Song Quiz.